So I'm down to my last glass of homemade fermented ginger ale and I thought um, while I make a new batch why not film the process to share it. Um, the recipe is very easy and there is no comparison between homemade fermented ginger ale and the store-bought kind from the can. Um, in fact, whenever you know you hear to um, drink ginger ale if you have an upset stomach, um, it's a myth that the can one will actually help um, soothe your stomach. There's just barely any ginger in it. It's all fake ingredients. Um, there's just nothing like the real deal homemade ginger ale that actually has real pieces of ginger in it. And I'll show you the ingredients in a moment. Now the first ingredient that you'll be using is some fresh ginger root. You can see that this one I've peeled it as well as I could. Um, you don't have to be perfect with it, just make sure that once you've peeled it that you do uh, rinse it off just to remove any surface dirt that may still be on there. And in a moment I am going to toss this ginger root into my food processor just to chop down the ginger into much smaller pieces. The next, in the next ingredient that we'll be using is about one fourth cup of fresh uh, squeezed lime juice. You could also use fresh squeezed lemon juice. The next ingredient is about one fourth cup of whey. Now the whey that um, needs to be used is liquid whey, not the powder. Uh, liquid whey is basically um, the liquid that accumulates at the top of yogurt. Uh, the next ingredient is going to be some organic cane sugar. We will be using about a fourth cup. Um, you could also use up to half a cup of it if you wanted to. Now with that, um, just know that the sugar is not necessarily for our consumption. The sugar is more for the beneficial bacteria from the whey to consume it. And then in turn that will create some carbon which will make the drink fizzy. Um, and the bacteria will also ferment the drink as well which gives us all the great probiotics. And we will also be using about one teaspoon of sea salt. Um, just get the best quality that you can find. If you don't want iodized salt, um, the regular unrefined um, type of sea salt is your best bet. Okay, so this is about the size that you want the ginger chopped. You don't want it pureed, just chopped very well. Okay, so here we are. I've added all of the ingredients to a large mason jar. I've also added two quarts of filtered water to it. Now, it's best to use filtered water when you're fermenting um, because otherwise the chlorine can kill off the beneficial bacteria and your product will not ferment. So I added a lid to the jar and tightened it. And now all you have to do is wait, which honestly is the hardest part about fermenting anything um, is just that you got to be patient. You have to wait for it. Uh, typically, ginger ale will take about three, maybe five days to ferment. Um, it all depends on the, temp the temperature in your home. The warmer you keep your home, the quicker the good bacteria will act and ferment um, the drink. Uh, basically, you just want to keep checking on it. Um, also, you want to make sure that you don't allow too much pressure to build up. And the best way to check on that is, um, you know, pretty much every day, come look at the jar, press down on it. And if um, you cannot press down, that means that the pressure is starting to build up in the jar. So you want to burp it, which basically means just um, loosening up the uh, ring and just kind of um, letting the pressure out. And then as soon as you put the cap back on, you can do this again. <laughs> so pretty much every day you want to go back and burp your jar. Otherwise the jar can break if too much pressure builds up in there. I also recommend labeling and dating your jar, um, especially if you have a lot of ferments going on at the same time. Um, this is just a good reminder to let you know how long it should sit out on your counter. So it's day three and I can tell that the fermentation is already well underway um, because when I click on the lid, um, or I'm sorry, when I press on the lid, there's no clicky sound. So I can tell that that pressure is really building up in here. And in a moment, I'm going to go ahead and burp the jar and I'll show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so with burping the jar, you just want to release the lid. And then that's it. I already heard um, the pressure come out. And then again, when you press it, now you can hear that clicky sound. 
So I'm just going to tighten this lid back up. I'll probably let it ferment one more day and then that'll be it. It'll be ready to consume. Today is the last day of fermentation. I'm happy with how fermented the ginger ale has become. So um, now it is time to either strain the ginger pieces uh, from the liquid or and store it in the fridge. Um, or you can keep the pieces with the um, liquid and then uh, store it in the fridge. Now, if you keep the pieces with the liquid, that just means that over time, the flavor is going to continue to develop and it's going to get a little bit more spicy. So um, what you can do if you want to separate the two is to just have another mason jar and then you want a fine mesh strainer and you can just put that over your jar and then pour uh, the ginger ale into here and it will um, prevent the pieces from getting into the bottom of the jar so you just have your liquid. Uh, the other option, if you plan on keeping the ginger pieces with the liquid together in the fridge, is as needed. Um, you can go ahead and take your strainer, put it over a um, glass, uh, <laughs> just a glass, and then you can go ahead and just strain it as needed, just like that. And then you can see that the ginger pieces are in here the liquid, liquids at the bottom, and then you can consume it that way. And um, I wouldn't be concerned about keeping the pieces in with the liquid because again, this is a fermented beverage. Um, it is going to be naturally preserved um, and you're also storing it in the fridge. Of course, if you're new to fermenting and you're a little bit weary about that, go ahead and just um, separate the pieces out from the liquid um, right now and then Later, as you get a little bit more adventurous with fermenting, then you can go ahead and leave them all together. One more thing I wanted to mention is that uh, with ferments, once you put them in the fridge, the fermentation process really slows down. I find that with ginger ale, um, over time the pressure still starts to build up because when I open um, the jar, some of that pressure releases and then the top also, um, you know, you can't indent it anymore, which is another sign that there's a uh, pressure built up in there. So every so often, if you don't plan on consuming it daily, just try to remember to burp the jar, which again, you just want to um, release it and then usually you'll feel um, that gas expel. Um, and again, this, uh, you know, this is just something that I find with ginger ale specifically. Anytime I make beet kvass or other ferments, um, it's very rare that that pressure builds up as quickly in the fridge as with the uh, ginger ale. And if you're interested in making homemade fermented ginger ale, I'll, I will have a link down at the bottom to the full recipe as well as um, some more information and details on kind of the ins and outs of the fermentation process.